Hello there, this is Dr. Z, and today we're going to be talking about writing a methodology for your literature review. Now, I've listed the four basic areas of writing this um, methodology on the screen. Um, remember that when we talk about the methodology, you sold them on your introduction. It's, it was gra a grabber, it got them excited about the things they're doing. Now what you need to do with the methodology is you need to sell them on the idea that you did some deep research you went out, you used the right descriptors, you, you found um, a number of resources, you combed through those resources looking for the, the materials that were valid and relevant, then you identified it, and so, in other words, you've done a, a thorough job of reviewing your liter the literature in the field. So, let's take a look at how to write a methodology. we got four areas. The first one is where you have to tell them about the tools you use and how you use them. This is where you explain the method that you <clears throat> use for identifying resources. In other words, you went out and you used databases. You might have used ERIC or Education Open. In other words, you have all these different resources that you use. So you tell them what it is, <clears throat> and then you tell them about what um, descriptors you used. Make a list. I mean, if you if you use like 300 of them, or maybe even if you lose, use 30 of them, you, you don't need to put all of that in. But, you know, maybe a, a dozen... 18 at most, you know, some people get by with about six or eight. The thing is that you don't want to overwhelm them with those descriptors. But so what you're doing is you're saying, okay, these are the databases I used, good resources. These are the descriptors I use, hmm, wonder why they didn't use, well, okay, that, that should work. So in other words, it's, they, they get to evaluate it that way. So once they've identified or they believe that you've done a stringent job, then you, they want to know about how you selected the sources. You know, you, you go out, you find dozens and dozens or hundreds of, of resources that are, are found in the, in the search that you do. <clears throat> now, what you do is you have to start looking through them with a broad comb to identify which ones you think would be most likely to have the information you need. And so you explain how you went about doing that. And then it was a matter of um, going through, and once you did that, then it's a matter of how, how did you go through and analyze when you were more specific. You got sat down and read the abstract. You started reviewing the the, um, the uh, article. How do you did you identify which were the ones that you wanted to use and and that you did use in your paper or in your review? So um, at, at that point, you want to identify what were the criteria that you used and whether they included um, things along the lines of, you know, was it a famous author? Um, was it cited by other organization, or other research? Just a whole number of things there as to how you were, um, uh, you, you were selecting these so you could put them into your, your review. Okay, um, let's take a look <clears throat> at some reviews. I have some examples here. And you'll notice that there is a link um, below here, which um, has a link to this file. And you should be able to see that I have the methodology examples. I have four examples here. Plus, I have comments going up and down the right-hand side. When you load it, it might take a little while for the comments to show up, so be patient. So this first one <clears throat> is one where they're talking about assistive technology. And um, this first one, uh, the way in which it was set up was it was chronological as to how they went, this person went through and did the, did the research, which is, it's one way to do it. Now, some people don't, don't do that, but I mean, this, this was one where he was, this person was actually talking about how the information unfolded in front of him. Um, made a little comment here because it said initially, um, Google Scholar was utilized to take an initial sample. You, you don't want to repeat the same word in, in a sentence or two. Um, I want to point out that this is first person. He says, um, that the data derived from Google Scholar with a search basis, I was able to. This is one of the parts in, in the literature review that you can write in first person. First person meaning I'm telling you about what I did when I did the search. Um, when you're doing the analysis and discussion, remember in the analysis and discussion, people don't care what you think. What, they're, what they care about is what you're telling them about the research you found. But in this case, you can do first, first person. <clears throat> Um, down here, they went through and identified the search terms, um, put them in italics. I think that's good because it really points them out. Um, here, it talks about using the snowball method. Now, the snowball method is something you learned about in another class, and actually, um, uh, Chris Newhouse talked about the snowball method. Some people don't know what that means. 
Another way is to simply say that a number of the articles were located through the reference list in relevant articles. Um, I used articles twice there, didn't I? Okay. Well, um, what you do is if you simply want to say that, you know, I, I looked at the back of, of the articles that I found relevant and found additional resources that way. <clears throat> here, when we talk about the sources, this is that broad filter I was talking about. Um, here, we're talking about how they went through and actually analyzed the data that was in the articles, as, you know, as to whether it was qualitative, quantitative, it fit the needs of what they were trying to talk about. So that's a pretty good introduction. We take a look at this one. The, um, this opening paragraph is succinct. There's a wealth of information for this review since it is a current topic of interest in the career field of human resource, um, corporate training, and instructional design professionals. And they went through and they said the University of Northern Iowa, Rod Library, Des Moines Public Library, and Authors um, Personal Library were used to select resources. EBSCO, ERIC, Unistar, in other words, it went through and explained which, um, what parts, well, what, what they use for the research. You notice it's, it's, it's just a single paragraph, very useful. And they went down, <clears throat> identified the um, descriptors that they used. Um, here they're talking about instructors at the University of Northern Iowa and professionals currently working in the corporate training field were also consulted. Now this is something I know we haven't talked about before, but um, if you have uh, resources that you can use to find out more about this, um, you can actually cite those in your research. Now they're not considered one of the, uh, uh, they're, they're not considered a uh, peer reviewed uh, resource, but it is something that can help guide your research and you might as well give them credit for it. Um, down here, we talk about, um, no, and, and you should take a look at the APA uh, to see how to cite those. You'll, you can find out how to do that. Here they actually identified the very specific questions that were used to identify uh, how they screened those articles. Down here, um, <clears throat> once again, they're talking about where they got their information. The Panther Prowler, this is what they used to call what we now call OneSearch. Um, here's a good collection of descriptors. And once again, here's that broad filter. Then down here at the bottom, it says uh, find reliable and valid re uh, sources of information. Finding reliable and valuable sources of information on staff development was a challenge for the researcher. Now the problem is that this researcher then went on to say the researcher used electronic databases I think that it would have been useful to put a couple sentences here where you're actually talking about why, you know, that there was a dearth of, of research in this area. And, you know, I mean, you don't have to get in, into it deeply, but um, I think something like that brings up some questions and you want to make sure that you're going to be answering those for your reader. Um, the challenge of citing resources in the World Wide Web is that the researcher had to check the credibility of the information found. Um, uh, the question is, and they're talking about another challenge. The question is, does that relate to the challenge at the beginning? Since there wasn't any explanation there, we don't know. Um, down here, we're talking about, uh, at the very end, they came up with questions that they used when they were trying to come up with the identifying how they would filter out the, um, uh, the resources. One thing that they don't really have here is as far as criteria, as far as how old they were, and, and there's, a, there's, there's a number of, of pieces of information there that are used to, um, to filter out resources that weren't included in this one, but I think it's, 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 overall it's pretty good. So, that's what we have. Those are the elements of a methodology. It's not a huge part of your, um, of your review, but it is indeed important. It's important that your reader feels that you did a, a thorough job in your research, and so I'm sure you're going to do a great job doing that. Well, good luck on this, and if you have any questions, contact me. Bye.